Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my September anti-haul. So I basically thought I bought everything that launched in the month of September. So we'll see if there's anything I actually skipped. And if you like roasting bad makeup, then just keep watching. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I like to film tan, girl-friendly makeup videos here on YouTube. I do post quite often, so highly recommend subscribing, turning on that bell so you're notified every time I post, and without further blabbering, let's get into it. Okay, so I kind of hinted that I really don't think there's anything I didn't buy in September, and so we're gonna see if uh, that's true, or maybe, you know, there was some stuff I actually managed to say no to who knows only time and this video will tell so let me go ahead and slide on over so we can put up some pictures and talk about some of the things we skipped out on in the month of september also if you're wondering about this look it is testing new makeup episode 42 so definitely check it out if you are wondering about how i created this plummy look Okay, so the first thing that was a really easy skip in the month of September, let's start off with some low-hanging fruit, shall we, is the new KVD Holiday Collection. So this consisted of a palette, some liquid lipsticks, and then like duos with liquid lipsticks and lip liners. We also have a vault where you can get 16 shades for $249. And then there's a Tattoo Duo Waterproof Eyeliner. So I feel like KVD, I don't know if they've just become less iconic with KVD actually leaving the brand. Of course, she's a very controversial and polarizing figure. So I'm not saying that she should have stuck around. But I feel like maybe this was one of those brands that we should just like let die. You know how they say like, let it go. <laughs> did I just quote Frozen there? I think I did. But it's like sometimes I feel like with the industry and these brands, like we don't know when to just like let it be. And like maybe it should have just faded out into the distance with KVD leaving the brand. But I feel like they've just struggled ever since she left to create something that was truly interesting and unique. The brand just kind of flourished when they were a part of the team and it was called Kat Von D. I don't know. I feel like we were all kind of just like rooting for them. And I feel like they never quite made the comeback that they should have made with all the success they had previously. From the Locket Foundation to the eyeliners to their eyeshadow palettes. Like those Monarch eyeshadow palettes were iconic. And especially with the holiday season around the corner. I feel like KVD was just like known for their holiday palettes. We all like fought over them. We all wanted them. That one palette, I can't remember what it's called right now, but the one that was in a shape of a record that was a rainbow palette. Oh my gosh, I swear that was like one of my biggest regrets as a makeup consumer not getting that palette. But when it launched, I wasn't into colorful makeup, so I didn't buy it. But yeah, I still remember seeing people do collection videos where they'd either declutter it or they'd just show it and I'd be like, oh my god, I wish I got my hands on that palette. And now I'm like, well, it's fine. It is what it is. So yeah, what happened to KVD, right? Like, let's, let's talk about it. I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section. Okay, next we are going to have to anti-haul this Cheetos and Olimar collection. I don't know if this launched already, but I haven't heard anyone talk about this collection. And I feel like this is one of those brands too that was so hyped when they did their, was it their like contours? Like they did these like blush contour duos or something like that. And then I think they did a collaboration with Encanto, which like now one of my favorite movies from Disney, but Back when that came out, I wasn't really like watching a ton of Disney and so much has happened since. So now I have two kids and they love Disney. So 
yeah, I haven't really heard much from them and I haven't really kept up with them. And it was one of those brands I always wanted like a bunch of stuff from, but they never did free shipping. They never had a sale. And so I was like, nope, I'm good. Like, I'm not about to buy stuff from them. And it's kind of stupid. Like, I really shouldn't be waiting around for free shipping to try stuff. But they also had a hard time keeping things in stock. So whenever I was actually ready to make purchase, I couldn't find my right shade or with something or the other. So it was just a brand I never tried. And I feel like as much as I want, you know, any small business, especially a women owned business to like thrive and do well, I feel like they're just fallen behind. So this collection with Flaming Cheetos, which don't get me wrong, I love me some Cheetos, is consisting of a eyeshadow quad a lip blush, a plumping lip blush, a lip liner, and a dual ended cheek stick as well as a black liquid liner. So the products are all kind of in the 20s to like 14, 15 dollar range. So nothing is like too, too pricey, but I just feel like who is this collection for? Like if you're a Cheeto fan, maybe it's for you. If it's just based on the quality and the look of the makeup, as a makeup lover, it's a pass for me. Okay, we have from Dior, they launched the Blooming Boudoir Collection featuring a Blooming Boudoir contour palette created by artist Pietro Ruffo. And so there is a 10 color eyeshadow palette for $140. Dior added case for $30, so I'm guessing you can just pop any lipstick in there. And then there is a cushion powder, a lipstick for 45, a duoratic lip maximizer for 40, and a lip glow for 40. So the packaging of this is absolutely exquisite. I would love to see this eyeshadow palette in person. I would love to swatch this palette in person at $140. That is definitely a luxury price tag for 10 eyeshadows. So yeah, I would love to see this in person. Of course, in pictures, it looks absolutely beautiful and so, so just fancy smancy, but it's a skip for me. Next, we have from the brand Summer Fridays. They're launching some new lip butter balm sets. So this is a limited edition set Three full-size vegan lip butters in cherry, vanilla, and iced coffee. Ooh, an iced coffee flavor. I wonder if they're going to sell that as a single because I'd just be curious to feel that and, like, smell that. But I swear I've tried so hard with Summer Fridays and I just don't love their lip balms. So as delicious as it sounds, I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. But if Laniche could make an iced coffee lip balm i would be all over it okay i thought this was so wild and the fact that people were like actually interested in this really had me scratching my head so from patrick ta they launched the major multi-dimensional eye toppers these were basically loose glitter toppers and they're 28 dollars each i feel like you could just really grab this product from the drugstore from indie brands. I just feel like $28 for this seems really ridiculous. And I bought a lot of ridiculous things from Patrick Ta Beauty. So I don't understand. Let me know if you guys have tried that product. I would love to hear your reviews, but I just feel like $28 for a loose glitter seems like a scam. Okay, next we have from Elf and Jennifer Coolidge. They did a collaboration called the Dirty Pillow Lip Kit. So there's a satin lipstick and a lip plumping gloss. There's also a lip liner as well as a mirror. I love Jennifer Coolidge. She's made such a comeback and I love that for her. I also really enjoy e.l.f. I think they make very affordable products. So I love that they kind of collab with somebody that is so iconic at the moment. But what I don't love is the color selection of this collaboration. In my opinion, it's definitely not suited for my skin tone. I really, really don't love wearing concealer lip colors. So I feel like this kind of pinky kind of, ugh, it's just like, oh, 
<laughs> like I just don't like that shade of swollen it's like a baby pink color and with my undertone I can't even begin to tell you how bad that color is gonna look on me it's a very milky pink so I had to pass on it even though I love her so so much next we have from Colourpop they did a round two with their Sailor Moon collection and honestly it's getting easier and easier for me to say no to Colourpop I hardly buy anything on their website anymore I feel like everything they've done has been done before and I feel like even Colourpop is kind of sick of themselves at this point like they have really slowed down which I'm not mad at I feel like it's definitely saying something about makeup right now if Colourpop is slowing down I wonder if this means like eventually they won't exist as a brand anymore because Again, I feel like they've gotten so repetitive and everything's just gotten so expensive. I don't know that they have that demand that's gonna, you know, need to be kept up with. I'm not an economist, but I would love to hear what your guys' theory is on the future of ColourPop. Like, it's just crazy to think like they used to launch something every week and now it's like once a month which again not complaining just curious so the new sailor moon collection came with a eyeshadow palette some blushes lip duos gel liners highlighters and it looked really beautiful like laid out if i have a picture up you'll see it obviously stunning but i just don't find these shades flattering on me the eyeshadow palette is basically like lots and lots of pastel -y tones and then one like electric blue shade I love their eyeliners. I feel like I could never have too many, but I did just get some, so I don't need those. I don't love the face gloss concept. I haven't tried their face glosses, but I'm not really super into dewy makeup anymore, so I'm not interested in that. And then on me, a highlighter that's purple is a tough one because it tends to go gray on my skin tone. So yeah, overall, I can pretty much just say no to all of this makeup and it's fine with me because i'm just saving money over here we also have the massive bizarre blizzard bash holiday collection from mac cosmetics so i will say the packaging again absolutely stunning when it comes to mac i could pretty much say the same thing about mac's holiday collection as i did about the kvd holiday collection it was an iconic situation every year when they launched their holiday collection. We'd all wait to see what the packaging was like. There'd always be like a best-selling highlighter that would sell out that was impossible to get a hold of. So yeah, sometimes I think I miss the good old days, but also I don't really because the indie brands have really come up with so many interesting formulas that I would hate for the nicest thing that I've ever tried to be a MAC eyeshadow because yeah there's definitely better eyeshadow out there now okay another holiday collection that I personally thought fell flat was the Charlotte Tilbury holiday collection so she had a giant like advent calendar but the main things I want to talk about are probably these Hollywood blush and glow duos as well as the Charlotte Exagger eye beauty secrets Exagger eye palette and honestly I think that it was smart for her to do a nine pan palette just to switch it up. I do have some of her other holiday palettes and I love them so much. The quality is definitely there. They're just a different type of shadow. They're pigmented, they're beautiful, they blend, they look good on the eyes. But overall, I just feel like I have been so overwhelmed with eyeshadow palettes. So for me to just drop coin on an eyeshadow palette, it really, really has to stand out in my head and this one just looked so so light it's got a few like tan shades and then we have these like weird like purples that don't really go with the browns in the palette so overall I feel like the palette had the most beautiful packaging in the world but what was on the inside just didn't really speak to me as far as the color story goes now I did hear that maybe the fire rose quad was coming back and I'm not like a Charlotte Tilbury girly. I don't keep up as much as I want to. 
And so can somebody update me on what's happening with that? Like, is it coming back? Has it come back? Did I miss it? Because every time people link it and say it's available in the US, it just takes me to a site saying coming soon and there's nowhere to add to cart, but it says it's like sold out. So I'm not sure if it came back and I just missed it or if it hasn't come back yet or if people are just making shit up. So let me know down in the comments if you know anything about that. And then as far as these duos go, there's like a light pink and a more white highlighter. And then we have a darker kind of warm highlighter as well as a warm blush. And the warm one or like the more deep one looks really beautiful. But I'm telling you, I have that a hundred times over in my collection. So I definitely skip that. Okay, from Urban Decay, we have these Moondust eyeshadow palettes. So these are basically the most beautiful like shimmery eyeshadows. They're perfect for the holiday season. I can't believe they're $57 each. Oh, that's Canadian. I don't know how much they are in US dollars, but for four kind of neutral eyeshadows, I don't know that I love that price point. I suppose though, even if they're like 40 bucks, because a single of this formula was pretty pricey too. So I guess maybe it makes sense to spend on a palette. I can see a lot of people being really into this formula. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. I used to have a Moondust eyeshadow palette and it was stunning. Like back in the day when these were like the coolest eyeshadows out there, they would totally be something that I applied over all of my other eyeshadow palettes, especially for a special occasion. But now, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but now that we have indie brands and we have beautiful multi-chromes, it's really hard to justify buying something like this. We also have the Little Lady Daisy collection from Lawless. Oh my goodness, I think Lawless makes some really cool stuff, but a lot of their products, I feel like, aren't something you can just keep buying, you know? Like, okay, cool, like, this is really pretty, but... I don't need this many lip glosses, so I'm going to be passing on it, but there is a Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. There's three shades, actually. Little Lady Daisy, Fresh, and Baby Love. We have a lip liner as well as a Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Satin Lipstick for $28. So again, I feel like these shades just would not be flattering on my skin tone. So it's an easy pass for me. I am a little bit curious about their satin lipsticks though and I wonder if I should consider picking one up during the Sephora sale. You guys let me know if you have any favorite shades. We talked about the Kimchi Chic Jewel Collection in a new makeup releases video and I think this is a fun little idea but oh my gosh these palettes just look so... I hate to say it, but they just look so cheap. I don't know. They look like kid makeup. I don't know if it's the pressed glitters or just like this black supposedly diamond one. It's literally just a bunch of sparkly shadows and like a white matte shade. Like, who came up with this? It looks very repetitive, very, very redundant. It's kind of giving me Huda Jewel Tone or the Jewel Stones or the Gemstones, whatever that collection they did. It's a similar vibe, but I feel like, you know, Huda did give us the benefit of having some more interesting shades. Overall, it is a skip for me. It just looks so childish. Next, we have from Road Beauty. I really am going to have a very unpopular opinion on this one, but I just have a hard time taking Hailey Bieber seriously. I really, really do. I do. I just, I just don't think that she is, like... I don't know, I just don't know how she became such an icon when it comes to like beauty. And I feel like maybe she's more TikTok famous than like YouTube famous or Instagram famous and she's very much about that like effortless look. But I feel like celebrities in general, they do put a lot of effort into looking like they didn't put a lot of effort into stuff. I mean, I'm not coming for anybody's like style or anything i'm just saying that as consumers we really need to be critical of like do we actually believe these people when they say like no makeup makeup look because i mean like kim kardashian's makeup artist has a whole makeup line granted like 
I don't know that Kim Kardashian was ever famous for the no makeup makeup look, but I don't know. I feel like Hailey Bieber because when you think of like Pam Anderson, for example, when she didn't wear any makeup, was it to like the Vogue? It was to some fashion show. She wasn't wearing makeup. And you can tell she's not wearing any makeup. And granted, she's like 50 something years old, but I feel like we can all tell when people aren't wearing makeup, but I don't know, it's so weird. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent, but I just have a hard time taking her seriously. I don't feel like she's like this person that we've always seen as like really into makeup. I feel like this is just one of those ways that celebrities like make their net worth number just go up higher. I know there are some celebrities that really seem to know their brand and have a lot of like experience and they talk about their inspiration with their makeup and stuff like that but I just don't see it for Hailey Bieber and maybe it's just me maybe I just don't know what's going on I don't keep up but I just have a hard time taking her brand seriously anyway she has a brand called Road and I think it started off as a skincare brand but now we have these lip tints so they're a sheer but buildable color that melts onto lips for a hint of tint and rich glossy finish so they look beautiful, but again, I feel like you can just get this at the drugstore. Also, Team Selena forever. <laughs> like, watch me get yelled at. Anyway, we've got from ABH. These are the two new mini eyeshadow palettes. So these are available on Sephora, and I think I saw them on Ulta as well. I feel like these are a skip for me because I have the original palettes, but honestly, they're kind of smart. They're kind of smart. Um, it's giving a little bit of color pop, but I feel like, you know, it was important for them to kind of give Modern Renaissance its own renaissance from having been out. Honestly, I can't even tell you how old that palette is. It's got to be, it's got to be quite a bit old because what do you guys think? Like seven years, seven, eight years? It's been a hot second since those palettes came out. And then they have the mini soul tree too. I'm not really into the colors in these palettes, but yeah, they're available and they're giving them a little bit of a double take because, you know, people might have missed out on that whole launch. And I'm happy to say I was a proud participant of the beauty community when the modern renaissance came out. But, you know, there's more people out there now. So very, very cool. We have the Danessa Myricks Holiday Set. This is so cute, but it's a very easy skip for me. So this is the Blurring Buddy Set. It includes a mini Yummy Skin Blurring Balm in the shade Universal and the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder flushed in a new pink color, It Girl. So I do really like the blush from that blurring lineup, but I've heard mixed things about the other products in that line. So I'm not really curious about that at all. We have from ColourPop, they launched this 1111 collection. And I saw a lot of people said that this was kind of like their dupe of the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette, which I honestly didn't really watch any videos on it. But if people are saying it's a dupe, I mean, it's worth checking into because the Natasha Denona palette is quite pricey. There's also some really beautiful nude lipsticks and some beautiful eyeshadows, like their pen eyeshadows. I also thought the blushes in this collection were beautiful. Overall, this is a stunning collection, especially for a neutral lover. I think you can't go wrong, but I need a neutral palette like I need a hole in my head. So it is an easy pass for me. Okay, I feel like we need to roast this Chantecai holiday collection. So this is the Precious Metals Collection. I feel like Chantecaille is like a low-hanging fruit for me because look at this. Like, look at the Where, where, on what planet am I going to wear any of these products? And I will say they did make the effort to have somebody like that's a tan skin tone swatch some of these lip products, but maybe there is somebody out there that can pull it off and it looks beautiful on. Just for my personal preference, I think those... Shades are very light. So we have our Lip Crystal for 52, Precious Gold Illuminating Powder for 102, Radiant Gold Eye Shimmer for 68. Is that basically a single eyeshadow? Listen, I can't be bothered talking about this. It's awful. I hate it. Get it out of here. Okay, this is so cute. I did go ahead and skip this though. This is the Wet n Wild and Scooby Doo collection. I feel like 
All of this stuff is so cute. So there's an eyeshadow palette, there is a brush set, nail polish, makeup bag that apparently glows in the dark, and a bunch of other stuff. I feel like if I saw this collection at Walmart, I might grab the makeup bag, I'm not gonna lie. But overall, I just don't need any of this stuff right now. I have so many beautiful eyeshadow palettes and so little time to play with them all, so it is a easy skip for me. We also have from KVD, they launched these Dazzle Gel Hyper Metallic Eyeshadows. I feel like you can call them all the fancy names in the book, but these are basically jewel tone, multi-chrome shades, and they've all been done before. I don't want a multi-chrome in a gel formula, so yeah, it's all an easy skip for me. Oh my gosh, you guys, I forgot that this launched in September, but we have to talk about the Pat McGrath Holiday Collection. I'm usually one of those people that looks forward to the holiday collection from Pat McGrath. I'm like saving all my coins and I'm like waiting, like patiently waiting and then this collection drops. And I'm like, no, no, absolutely not. This is awful. So I see there is a eye and face palette. There's two different shades. The one that I think would go with my skin tone, I don't like the eyeshadows. And I'm not going to buy both because they're like $75 each, which is absolutely insane. There's a bunch of quints that look like every other quint she's come out with. There's one that's sort of interesting. And it did come to Ulta, so I did grab it because I had a 20% off coupon at Ulta. So we'll see. I'm still very skeptical. But the mascaras and like, what is this? It's just such a letdown. And then she did like blush, highlighter, and bronzer in a trio, and she did three different tones, but I have so many of her face products that it's a skip for me, so yeah, overall, I think that I was most let down by Pat McGrath's holiday collection because I feel like the expectations are decently high with her, although she is also one of those brands that I think is definitely in their, like, flop era, but oh my goodness, that was so so disappointing I cannot believe it okay let's talk really quickly about this P Louise Halloween collection they did so they did these book of spell palettes that are double-sided they're so pretty like the color stories are so so pretty but I just hate P Louise's packaging I don't think they're gonna change it anytime soon it's like too iconic I feel like the brand is just known for that so I can't imagine them changing their style, but why, oh why do they keep doing these giant palettes that you could use as a weapon? Overall, I was able to pass on them. I also feel like, I'm just going to put up this picture that Trend Mood has, and I just wish that, you know, the palettes were kind of grouped by color story, so that cool tone blue and the fun, like, colorful warm tone blues, that should have been a double-sided palette. And then the purples and the reds could have been one other double-sided palette and I would have been fine because I wouldn't want the reds and the purples. But those blues with the greens would have been so, so fun. So I really wish that they would just like consult me with these palettes that they're making because they're so awful. Okay, y'all, I could go on and on. There were so many things that I actually passed on in the month of September. So... Pat on the back for me, pat on the back for you if you've been good, if you've been sticking to your low buy rules or your no buy rules, give yourself a you deserve it because September was a tough month. October has been pretty tough too. I'm thinking that things might slow down in November. I feel like the indies just like hit Halloween super duper hard. So I feel like we're all just going to take it a little bit slow, but... I feel like I'm also wrong. I feel like they have lots of palettes and we just are blissfully unaware. So we'll see. It could go either way, but I'll definitely be back with another anti-haul featuring all of the products I didn't buy in October. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I will see you very, very soon. Bye!